Okay, now we are asked to give the general solution for the following trigonometric equation. We notice that it doesn't look very difficult at all. However, we do see that we have a fraction in this in this one. Now, fractions usually complicate things a little bit, but the lovely thing about trigonometric equations, um, actually equations in general, is that we can get rid of fractions very, very easily. All we need to do is multiply with the lowest common denominator. Now here, we only have one denominator, and that is sine of alpha. So we just multiply everything with a sine of alpha. So instead of having 3 sine alpha, we now have 3 sine squared of alpha. Instead of just having a 5, we now have 5 times sine alpha. So notice how I multiply every term with a sine alpha. And what happens when I multiply the term on the right-hand side with a sine alpha? It cancels. You see how we got rid of that fraction? Okay, so on the right-hand side, instead of having the fraction, I now simply have 2 over 1, um, which just leaves me with that negative 2. So, um, in just since I recognize that it, we have a quadratic expression here, my unknown is in a function that's being squared. That means this thing is going to have two solutions. Okay, so that I'm going to take everything to the one side and factorize. Okay, so I, sub I add the 2 on both sides, that's where I got the plus 2 from, equal to 0, and this is my uh, general form. Now, just in case this might look too difficult to factorize, let's make it look easier by saying let y equal sine alpha. And the reason why I do that is so that I can have 3y squared plus 5y plus 2 is equal to 0. And I don't think you'll have any problem putting these in two brackets. First of all, I know the two signs must be the same. Both must be a positive in order that to get that positive 5. Okay, positive, positive. Okay, we will have to get a 2 in the one bracket. Um, and this time that must give me 3, so it must be 3 times 1, and now it's simply going to be either 2 times 1 or 1 times 2. So let's see which one works. So if I have 2 plus 6, sorry, 2 plus uh, the 2 and the 1, I have 2 y's plus 3 y's, and that will give me 5 y's. If I rather tried this one and I said, okay, let's make it 3y plus 1, then it would be 1y plus 3 times 2 plus 6y's. That would have given me 7y's. That's not going to work. So in other words, I see this one, this one works, the one where I have the 2 and the 1. Okay, so let's get rid of the rest. There we go. That works perfectly fine. Equal to 0 which means I either have y is equal to negative 2 over 3 or y is equal to negative 1. But we never had a y in our equation. y was just a, a substitution, a placeholder for sine alpha. So I now keep my sine alpha is equal to negative 2 over 3 or sine alpha is equal to negative 1. Now, I get a reference angle for each one of my um, uh, answers. For this second one, my reference angle to get negative 1 is negative 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees gives me 1, so sine of negative 90 must give me that. Or you could just use your calculator. I'm going to use my calculator for the second one. so that I have negative 2 over 3, 2 over 3, negative, okay, and I use the inverse sine function to get negative 41.81. So here it's negative 41.81, which means my solutions are that alpha is equal to negative 41,81 plus 360 times k, okay, or alpha is equal to negative 90 plus 360 times k. Or for sine, our second solution 
is where alpha is equal to 180 degrees minus the reference angle, which in this case is negative, so it's plus 41,81 plus 360 times K. That solution is 180 plus. That is 221,81 plus 360 times K, K, okay. and then this one, similar, 180 minus, minus 90 gives me 180 plus, so that is 270 um, degrees plus 360 times K. Now the careful observer will notice that these two are indeed the same answer. But that's it. Those are my four solutions.